The long-awaited new millennium was finally upon us, and although it was a time of great celebration, the night was also met with apprehension. Now as the next century rapidly approaches, there have been very legitimate concerns about potential Y2K problems and terrorist threats. And John Walsh of America's Most Wanted is in the command center of the New York City Mayor's office. More than 50 state federal agencies are watching and ready to react to any situation. Starting last Wednesday, more than 100 crisis managers began round-the-clock monitoring of New York's critical systems. And we're on the 23rd floor here, so this place is virtually flood-proof and chemical warfare-proof. As the world turned before us, it became clear that Y2K had been overblown. It is too early yet to say that all is well, but so far the FAA says that uh, not a plane was affected. The word came to Washington that all is well. So far all of the briefings in Washington have told us that everything is green, which means that all computer systems are so far working that matter. The Pentagon is pleased, and it looks like this Y2K turn may turn out to have none of the trouble than anyone predicted. Tonight we celebrate the change of centuries, the dawning of a new millennium. We celebrate the future, imagining an even more remarkable 21st century. So we Americans must not fear change. Instead, let us welcome it, embrace it, and create it. Such a triumph will require great efforts from us all. It will require us to stand against the forces of hatred and bigotry, terror and destruction. It will require us to make further breakthroughs in science and technology, to cure dread diseases, heal broken bodies, lengthen life and unlock secrets from global warming to the black holes in the universe. Although Y2K turned out fine, there was a definite sense of disappointment. The coming of the new millennium seemed anticlimactic. There was no discernible difference between the years 1999 and 2000. As the year passed, this feeling only grew stronger, with a presidential election featuring two of the most boring candidates Americans could remember. There was some excitement, as an extremely close election ended in controversy over who had won. But after the dust had settled, the title of Commander-in-Chief went to this guy. Then it was back to business as usual, with George W. Bush as the most boring president in history. I'm working on some initiatives. <laughs> We're, uh, you'll see, I mean, there'll be, I've got, there'll be some decisions that I will have made while I'm here, and we'll be announcing them as time goes on. One year later, something happened that would change the world forever. That morning we watched in horror and disbelief as reality resembled the fiction of a big budget Hollywood disaster film. The nation was in shock. How did this happen? Who flew those planes? What are we going to do? These were the obvious questions which demanded answers. And we didn't have to wait very long for those answers. Nineteen Muslim extremists had hijacked airliners with box cutters. They targeted major U.S. landmarks to get their message across. We hate America and its freedom. These men had been led by Osama bin Laden, the mastermind behind the anti-American, radical Islamic group known as Al-Qaeda. Luckily, American troops had already been amassed in and around Afghanistan, the country where bin Laden was hiding in a cave. As the military went to work in Afghanistan, we the people were asked to make some serious changes at home. The war on terror had begun, and with it came the expectation that certain liberties would have to be sacrificed in the name of security. We found ourselves living in a post-9-11 world. As the world changed all around us, a fanatical form of patriotism offered condolence to those mourning the loss of the now distant good old days. Boredom was a thing of the past. Changes came faster than they ever had before. While most people were slapping red, white, and blue stickers on their bumpers, the United States government was busy 
holding a conference concerned with changes so large that they promise to alter human nature itself. 21st century goals were discussed in preparation for what would come to be known as the Age of Transition. Transition.